Hey guys, Dan here with Device Enforcer, and today we'll be taking a look at a CPU tower cooler from Scythe, the Musion 5 Revision B. You may or may not have heard of Scythe before, depending on where you're located. Up until recently, they've been a primarily overseas operation, but recently they've been expanding into North American markets. So let's see what we get for our almost $50 in terms of this cooler. Based on the title, you may have noticed that this is the second revision of this cooler. So what they added in this version is support for AMD's AM4 socket, out of the box. Taking a look at the right side of the packaging, we can find the specifications of the product. I won't bore you by reading this out in detail, but if you're curious, feel free to pause the video and take a closer look. The other side of the box shows off the features of the cooler, but we will get more into this once I show off the contents, and the back mainly contains warranty information. So for now, let's get this thing open and take a look at what's inside. First off, we have the heatsink itself. It's decently large, about on par with CryoRigs H7. At the bottom you can see it has six heat pipes per side. And the total dimensions, it measures 154.5 millimeters tall, 130 millimeters wide, and 85 millimeters long. In the back, it has this cutout here, and that should allow for RAM up to 55 millimeters tall to be installed on the back side of the cooler, but this is only applicable in platforms with DIMM slots on both sides of the CPU socket. In terms of RAM compatibility for the front side, You'll notice that the entire cooler is sloped backwards, and that should allow clearance for the front fan before it reaches the RAM. See. Up top, we can see the Scythe logo, as well as these heat pipe caps that help to give the overall look of the cooler a cleaner look. The next item in the box is the fan. This is a 120mm fan from Scythe's Kaze Flex line. And you'll notice here, it's a PWM fan, so it supports four pin motherboard headers. Scythe has rated this fan to operate between 300 and 1200 RPM, and they say it can move between 16.6 and 51.17 cubic feet of air per minute through the heatsink. Additionally, it has a static pressure of 0.75 to 10.3 pascals. The frame of the fan incorporates these anti-vibration mounts, and that should help reduce the noise which has been rated to be between 4 and 24.9 decibels above ambient. Additionally, you'll notice here that the power cable of the fan is actually sleeved, which is certainly not necessary, but it's something I always like to personally see on CPU fans. Next up is the mounting hardware. As I alluded to earlier, this cooler now includes hardware to be used with the latest socket types from both Intel and AMD. With the Intel mounting kit, a separate metal backplate is included. Usually cooler backplates are either entirely plastic or have a plastic coating to avoid shorting the traces on the back of the board, but in this case, Scythe is getting around this issue using rubber insulating pads on the corners of the bracket. For AMD systems, the cooler mounts using the stock backplate included in the board. Additionally, the cooler comes with two sets of fan clips, one to mount the included fan and another for any fan you might want to add in the future. Scythe also includes a small tube of thermal paste as opposed to having it pre-applied. This is my preferred method of thermal paste inclusion because you'll have some left over that you can use if you ever need to remount the cooler. Be sure to hang on to this and keep it somewhere safe in case you need it again. The final item included with this cooler is this screwdriver. It's a fairly nice screwdriver with a magnetic tip, but it isn't included as a value add-on as much as it's a vital component to install the cooler. Due to the offset design of the fin stack, this long screwdriver is used to access the rear screw during installation. Speaking of installation, let's go see how easy or difficult this cooler is to install. I'll be replacing the AIO in my current Ryzen system and then sharing some performance results with you. Okay, so I removed the AIO from my Ryzen system and I'm going to be installing the Musion 5 now. So the first part you'll need is the stock backplate that came with your motherboard. That just has to go back behind the board like that. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is install the brackets that'll hold the cooler onto the chip. 
So for my system, since I've already got it assembled, I'm going to be installing them as a unit. But for AM4, note that you need these plastic spacers with the wider hole towards the bottom. And then the screw goes through the innermost hole on the bracket. Okay, now that we have the bracket on, the next step is going to be to apply the thermal paste. So that might actually be a little bit much, but I'm sure it'll be fine, and I want to eliminate the thermal paste application as a variable in this test. So now that there's thermal paste there, the next step is to install the cooler itself, and for this step you'll need the screwdriver that we talked about earlier. And also be sure to take off the plastic coating that came on the bottom of this originally. Okay, now the cooler is mounted and all we have to do is put this fan on it. You should note that the clips that come with the fan can be pre-installed on the fan and they actually stay on it. So you don't have to worry about fiddling with loose clips while you're trying to do this. So what I'm going to do is plug the fan in first and then clip the fan to the heatsink. Okay, so now it's installed in the system and this is what it looks like while it's running. On the desktop here you'll see I have open two programs that I'll be using to test the CPU. The first is CPU ID's CPU-Z, and this shows that it's the Ryzen 7 1700, and it's at 3.9 GHz here. And under the Bench tab, I'll be using the Stress CPU to test it under load. And then the monitoring software I have open now is Hardware Monitor. So as you can see, we're at idle, and it's only at 36 degrees Celsius. So I'll be back once we also do the load testing and then I'll also do some noise testing before the video is over. So I'll see you in a few once I've done the load testing. Okay, so I'm back after running the load test and in case you were in any doubt that the system is under heavy load, it looks like the load test is eating up so much CPU power that the effects on these LL fans have actually become laggy. So let's take a look at what the temperatures came out to be. So here in Hardware Monitor you can see that it leveled off at 58 degrees Celsius and this is after running the test for 15 minutes. So I'm back with a small correction. When I was editing the footage I noticed that I was reading the CPU temperature in Hardware Monitor from the CPU section of the motherboard info when I should have in fact been reading it from the package temperatures. I know this is an amateur mistake but I should have caught this before I recorded the original footage. I'll put in some graphs at the end that show the corrected numbers, and then I'll also have a comparison to the AIO that I normally use. Sorry for the mistake, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the video. So, as we can see here, the Musion 5 actually is quite close to a cheaper AIO, the Deepcool Captain 240 EX RGB having actually a lower idle temperature, but then falling slightly behind in load temperatures. Obviously compared to something like the Corsair H100i Pro, it's not quite as close, and that's also partially due to the fact of, that I've replaced the fans on the uh, Corsair AIO with LL120s, which are high-end fans, and the Musion 5 is fighting a little bit of an uphill battle with its stock fan but it's still close enough that you wouldn't really notice a performance hit from this unless you were using a higher TDP chip. So overall the performance of this I would say is quite adequate and it's actually pretty close to AIO performance. I'd imagine there's some on the market that it would actually beat out in this test. Alright, this is the idle noise test. And as you can see I'm using an app that comes pre-installed on my phone to test the noise levels. So this is probably not the most accurate test, but since it was included with the phone, I'm assuming it was pre-calibrated. So as you can see, when I stop talking, 
the noise goes down to the point where you can't hear it over the ambient sound. So this is the noise level under load. You'll notice that it's definitely higher than the um, idle situation, but it's still not noticeably that loud. And I would actually put this on par or slightly quieter than my AIO. And the noise level is more of a low hum than it is like high-pitched whining like you would get with a stock cooler, so it's easy to tune out. So once you see when I stop talking, it'll go to around 40-ish decibels. And that's not sound in the range where you would actually be able to really be bothered by it or notice it too much. So overall, I would say this is a pretty quiet cooler. And if you're looking for something quiet, this would definitely be a good option to consider. So overall, what are my thoughts on the Mugen 5 Revision B? I actually ended up really liking it. If you're looking for something that's cheap and performs similarly to, or even better than an AIO, you can't really go wrong with this. I think for most people, the ultimate choice is going to come down to whether or not they like the looks, and that's entirely subjective. For me, I'll be swapping in my AIO after this review, because it really doesn't go with the whole theme of my system, but if you're going for an air-cooled build, or you're just looking to optimize the budget and get the highest performance you can for the lowest cost, you really can't go wrong with this, and I would fully recommend it. Thanks for watching, and if you liked it, be sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.